Are you going crazy in the box? Are you I've, the I've done some stuff like that. <laughs>What's going on guys, Coach Matt and Hugo Pro Baseball. I'm here with the man, Kevin Graber, KG, and we're talking base running. In fact, we've been talking base running all day today. Shot a fun. lot of great videos. Yep. I'll leave the links down below to all of those. A lot of great stuff. A lot of secret sauce in those videos. A lot of secret sauce that you're going to want to steal <laughs> and implement with your guys. Steal, pun, base running pun. <laughs> I did that on purpose. <laughs> I really didn't. But in this video, we're going to talk about from the third base box, the coach's box, what Co uh, Coach Kevin's doing in the box to have a lot of success on the field because he's coached at the professional level, college level, coached in the Cape Cod, coaches at the high school level now, team won 11 championships, guys coach of the year all the time, talked to the, on the big stage at the ABCA this year. I mean, this is the guy you want to talk to when it comes to base running. And I want to, I personally want to pick his brain about what he's doing in the box to have a lot of success. So what do you got for me? Is there anywhere you can start with this? Yeah, so I like to maximize the space in the box itself. And so I move around in the box depending on where the runners are on base. So if I have a runner on first base, for instance, I will work the back side of the box because if the ball is hit and he's coming around second base and that ball's behind him, I want to get out here almost in left field where he can see me really, really well. He wouldn't be able to see me so much down there. With a runner on second base, this is the end of the coaching box that's closer to home plate. With a runner on second base, if the ball is hit in a left field, in a center field, or in a right field, I want to be able to scoot down with the runner as he comes around so I can get a look and see if that outfield is going to field that ball cleanly. Now here's a scenario that I learned about, and that is I go down further depending on where that ball is hit. If it's a ball hit to the left fielder, for instance, I don't go down that far because you got the shortstop at third base as he's rounding and left fielder fields it quick, throws it into the third baseman who's the cutoff man. He's coming around and they throw behind. Like that can happen really, really quickly if I hold them up. So I actually hold them on a ball hit to left field much quicker than I will on a ball hit to center field or to right field. On a ball hit to center or right, I will come down with that runner and I'm looking to see if they field that ball cleanly. And when they do, then I can put the brakes on and they can stop right down here and then scramble back. But you can't do that when the ball's hit to the left fielder. So you gotta be aware of little things like that. That's, that's great stuff. Is there any, are you saying as close to the line as you can? Are you getting any depth, like going back by the third base dugout or? Yeah, I, I you know, if the runner and I make contact, he's out. <laughs> right, <laughs> so staying out of the yeah, way. I need to get out of the way, but also, you know, at the same time, I need to be able to see here, he needs to be able to see me, and I need, I need to be able to make a good decision as well. Now, are you just using hand signals? Are you going, stop, back, back? Like, what, are you being very verbal? Yeah, so the hand signals are, this, this means stop. But it doesn't really mean get back to the bag. Okay. And so that means get back to the bag. If I want the runner to just come to the bag and stop and not make a turn, it's there, there, there. But if I want them to actually make a turn, I'll come with them and I'll give them the stop right there. What about a slide? Like if you need this guy to slide. Okay. Or. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, you, are, you, are you going crazy in the box? Are you I've, the I've done some stuff like that. <laughs> you know, here's another thing is that Sometimes you have a decision to make when a runner is coming around second. And one thing that I like to think about is like, who's the cutoff man? Where's the cutoff man? And has the ball reached him yet? So if he's coming around second, that ball hasn't gotten to the cutoff man yet. Sometimes that's an indication that he, I can keep him coming. The other thing is the momentum of the outfielder or the fielder who's going to make that throw. Um, Definitely, if a field, like a fielder might have the ball, but if his momentum is taking it, him away from third base or away from home plate, that's an indicator that I can wheel him toward home plate. Um, if their momentum is coming toward where they need to make that throw, that could be an indicator that we need to hold them. How much, at the high school level, how much as a coach are you taking responsibility to understand the outfielders and know their abilities and their arm strengths? Like, is that something that you're looking at before the game or even just scouting during the season? Like. How, or is it just like, that guy looks like, that right fielder, I've never seen him, but he looks like a stud, let's be careful at first, or like, 
How, how deep do you get? Yeah, I mean, in our league, we play each team twice. So you don't get a wealth of scouting reports. And the other thing that I find is during pregame, you know, I'm with the starting pitcher and I'm working with a kid on this and I'm doing that. And I don't always get a good look at, uh, but I have, I have a couple of assistant coaches who get a good look at the throwing arms. But I'm sort of really super over aggressive. That might not surprise you. <laughs> like, especially with two outs, John, I'm wheeling everybody. Nice. I mean, and, you know, in high school baseball, you know, it's asking a lot to, to feel the ball cleanly, make a strong throw, make an accurate throw through the cutoff man. Then they have to have a good decision. Catcher's got to be communicating or the third baseman's got to be communicating, cut or let it come. And there's a lot that they have to do well um, that you see done super duper well at the college level and definitely at the pro level. But the high school level, sometimes it's a work in progress. So we're, we're a little bit more, I am more aggressive at the high school level than I was at the college level or, at, or in pro ball. Never make the First, first out, out at third base. Third out at third base. Agree or disagree? Okay. So we love to steal third base. This is different than making turns. Okay. And uh, so sometimes you have to buck conventional wisdom, and we do this all the time. Like we love to steal third base with two outs because we get a lot of throws that go into the outfield, and then with that runner on third base with two outs, there's a lot of different ways we can score without having to wait for a base hit. So we're, we, um, we're a little bit less traditional than maybe some of, some of the more conventional programs in that regard, I would say. And that could be also a benefit too, because a lot of teams are playing defense to like, you know, okay, this guy's not gonna be stealing in this situation. And I'm like, why did this guy just steal right here? You yeah, know? and you know, it's, I've had some handshake line conversations after games where, <laughs> Coach would be like, hey, I like the way you guys play, but man, those, those are some bad decisions y'all are making. <laughs> and I was like, well, we were safe. <laughs> but you know, that's us. Uh, timing, distance, and anticipation. If those things fall into place, we go. We don't care how many outs there are. We don't care what the score is. Uh, if you give it to us, we're gonna take it. There's a lot of high schools programs across the country that may not be as uh, prestigious as yours, mm -hmm. like the, the high school that I played at, yeah. was, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, we didn't have a great setup. A lot of times, we only have one coach there. We had a kid in the first base coach's box. Yeah. Who's over there in your first base box, and what is the role of the person in the first base coaches. I actually love the idea of kids coaching bases. We do it in our inner squads all the time, but we're really fortunate. We have like the world's smartest human being uh, in our, on our coaching staff, Coach Fritz. He's a member of our history department and uh, he's awesome. So he's a really, really good first base coach and a great resource to have over there. That's awesome. And what are you telling the kids like as far as um, when they get when they get on base or when they're, let's, let's talk about out of the box. Yeah. Are they picking like they get a ball that goes through the infield. Are they picking you up first? Are they picking the ball up first? Are they picking second base up first? Like what's the sequence that they're, they're trying to look for? Anything they can see, I want them making their own decisions. I don't even want them looking at me. Um, Cause I like have one answer to every question and it's yes. <laughs> and it's not always right. Um, when the balls hit behind them and they're approaching second base, that's where I feel like I really need to get out here. And I, and I need to be able to help them make that decision. Um, and I also have to be able to move around a little bit because being out here when they're coming around second might turn into me having to get over here if he's gonna come around third after that. So I gotta stay fit so I can maneuver and help these guys out in different situations. In the very little coaching experience that I have on the field coaching a team, one of the hardest things for me was when you got two guys or three yes. guys on base. How are you communicating with these guys? I gotta let this guy pass and then get the heck out there because right. I've said stuff to the lead runner that the trail runner thought was meant for him. And I've also said stuff that was meant for the trail runner that the lead runner, like I've held the trail runner and the lead runner thought I was holding him. Right. I've done it, I've done it. So I think you just, you know, the longer you coach, the more of these mistakes you make. And then every time you encounter these situations and make me these mistakes, you're better equipped to handle it the next time you face it. Without going into your signs and telling us your actual signs, yeah. what, what is something that you're trying to do to help these guys understand them and not miss signs? Like, is there anything you guys are working on or is it just like yeah. putting in the work, drilling it all over? Well, you know, we, we have a lot of different things that we do on offense. And if each thing that we do on offense involved touching a different body part, <laughs> that like, hat, steel, belt, bunt, sleeve, first movement, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of body parts. Um, so I, I actually prefer a count system with an acronym. And the acronym could be something like, you know, 
bunt steal hit and run squeeze uh you know barry sanders high school let's say right. and so after you touch the indicator then you start to count touches so you know indicator bunt steal hit and run right and then you can have things that turn things into other things like let's say i give steel and i want to turn steel into delay you know i can give steel and then like touch my hat and that turns steel into delay um, you know, so anything you can do to give kids memory cues that, that helps systematize it rather than like, all right, foot means something really, obs I, you know, I just want right. to keep it as simple as we can for the kids. That, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That but also sense. be able to have a lot of stuff in your system. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you have a lot of stuff. Yes. And uh, how, tell me just to kind of pull everything together here, how important is it for the coach who is trying to better their base running game. How important is base running? How, how, how much of it can affect the success that you have on the field? Well, I mean, I can tell the story about 2014 again. Tell me. We had a pretty good team and we started off one in five. And I'm like, I am the worst coach in the history of mankind in any sport. And then it was a Wednesday loss. And that night I, I was researching the back edge of the internet and I just thought there was something on the bases that we were missing that we could do to score runs that didn't involve string and seven hits together. And you know, I discovered some cool resources. One was Mike Roberts, who I think is the, the best uh, base running coach in the history of baseball. His son, Brian Roberts, played in the big leagues, was stealing 50, 60 uh, bases a year. A lot of what Mike teaches was based on a lot of stuff that Brian Roberts did in Major League Baseball. And you know, we were able to implement a lot of the things that I researched pretty, pretty quickly. And we went from like zero to 100 that season. We went from being a pretty anemic offense that was easy to defend to all of a sudden, it was like we were doing this stuff that no one had seen in the Northeast. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. It was really rewarding. And it, and it really showed in our results on the field. That's, that's awesome stuff. And we talked a lot about base running today. He shared a lot of secret stuff that he's never said on video before. Yep. And I'll leave all the links down below to the videos that we shot. Definitely recommend going checking them out. Also, go over to Big Blue Baseball on YouTube and subscribe. He's posting a bunch of content over there, great stuff. Again, he spoke at the ABCA on the big stage. That video's out there somewhere. That was a great one. I'll leave all the resources down below in the comment section. Go check them out. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below and uh, we'll try to answer the best we can. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the information. You got it, John. We'll see you guys in the next one.